So we're going to look at some of the challenges of running um, <clears throat> a program, an app on a phone or an emulated phone. Just make sure uh, you can get that all set up for this class. So I'm running Android Studio. I've got a project open here. This is actually the project for participation this week where we're converting euros or dollars uh, back and forth. So I've got that open and I, I want to run this, but first let's check my phone. So I've plugged in a phone to the USB port uh, on my uh, computer with a USB cable. Uh, and then I'm actually I'm actually running some software that lets me mirror this phone on my um, on my screen so you can see what's going on with it. So this is this is actually a same scholastic phone that I have here. Um, so a couple things to make sure you have set up. You want to have developer settings on your phone. So I'm gonna pull down and go to settings and make sure developer options are set. If this isn't set up, you usually have to go to about this device, find the build number here and click on that um, a bunch of times. And it should tell you eventually <coughs> that you are, uh, if I think it's nine times that you are a developer, but I'm already a developer, so it's telling me that. Um, I also note the build, Android. This is an old phone. This is this is running Android 4.4.2, and I usually shoot for devices above five, so I'll have to make sure I'm aware of that. Um, so once developer options are set, you should see it available in settings. And the main thing we want to make sure it's uh, enabled is USB debugging, and that's set. Um, and that developer op in, in, in general are on. So once you have that set, when you plug in your phone, um, often your phone will ask you, uh, do you want to allow this particular computer to debug or do, do USB debugging on your device? Um, and you can say yes at that point. So I've done that already. So now I'm going to run um, the app and so it picks up this phone. This is a blue dash phone, <clears throat> and it's running it. Now, if uh, it's running Android 4.4.2, which is API 19, um, and so if it finds a phone that, that fits that, that's okay. But um, I've got to watch because it may not. When I originally set this up, I'd set up for Android 5 or greater as a minimum SDK. So you can actually go in and reset that. Uh, there's a build.gradle for your app available in your Gradle scripts. And one of the configurations is a minimum SDK. And this was set to 21. I moved it back to 18 so I could run it on this older phone. And then I had to rebuild. So um, now I've run this app. I've actually, uh, and it's downloaded to the phone and ran. Um, and so if I look over my phone, here's my app running. Um, on it. So it's actually running on the phone, the physical device uh, to my left here, but again I'm mirroring that device on the screen so you can see it. So that's why you can see it on this screen even though it's actually running on my physical phone. Um, and then if I make some changes to this I can click this and rerun it. Um, you might get some warnings about quick um, how to do this and how to do it quickly. Um, it, it generally expects uh, a 64-bit processor with some virtualization enabled, and I'll post some a link to uh, Google's information on Android at an emulator on what some of the requirements are. Uh, you can usually get it to run; it'll just run slower. I mean, that's the emulator. You, uh, th your phone should run fine on any sort of device. So I usually like to run this rather than emulators because it's just a little faster. Okay. So let's talk about the emulators. So let's say we don't have a phone. Uh, so that's gone. And we want to run this on a virtual or an emulated phone. So again, I click on this. So here's my regular phone, but I'm going to create a virtual phone here. I'm going to create a new virtual device. Uh, I'm going to create a phone and these different options. I'm just going to stick with the default uh, Nexus 5X here. It's a good size and stuff. So I'm just going to do that one. You can actually create multiple devices and test on multiple devices. But again, they take up a fair amount of space on your disk uh, to load up all these configurations. Okay, so I'm going to do that one. Um, it wants to know what uh, system image to put on there. Um, and again, you've got to download these if need be. Um, so this is the only one that's... Um, I'm sorry, none of these are actually uh, downloaded yet. Um, these are the recommended I images. You can actually download and uh, install older ones uh, in different ways, like 4.4 uh, if you want to do different devices. 
um, and different images here. Um, I'm going to just install, let's just install 7.0 NuGet on this device. So I'm going to download that. It's going to take a while to download um, and set, so I'm just going to watch that download. So the download's finally finished. Again, these are rather large downloads and take a while because they are, they are the whole system image of the phone or the OS. So now that's uh, available here for me to select. I can hit next. Um, I want to give it some name uh, here, and usually the default name is fine. Uh, I like to know the API and what it is set up for. Um, most of this other stuff I can leave as is. So I'm going to hit finish, and now this device should show up here on my available virtual devices. So here's my connected device, my phone that's connected, here's my emulated device here. So now, again, this is where I originally hit play. Uh, so here, let's just again hit play and this is available and then I have a virtual device here and I can just say run on that virtual device and then it should start up the emulator um, here it is uh, and it takes a while to start up and run and sometimes it takes so long to start up the run that your Android Studio won't work right away and you have to run it again but we'll just let this boot up uh, it does a normal Android OS boot so it's starting up now um, And after just a few seconds, the um, app runs. I can then uh, run this keyboard, enter some value, hit the buttons. Um, so again, it works just like a regular phone. Now, one thing you should do generally, this, since it takes a while for the app to start running, is to leave this up and off to the side somewhere, and then you can go back here. You can stop this. Uh, you can reprogram it, and then you can run it again. Um, on that virtual device. Also, um, if it's running here, you can uh, do some editing and uh, do this quick run. Uh, the, the, when the play with the dot means it'll quickly rerun it on this phone. Uh, so again, you should be able to set up multiple or at least one device that you can emulate uh, if you need to. You can also plug in your phone and run that. Uh, so feel free to contact me if you have trouble getting at least one of those options uh, running. I'm going to hit stop here because I don't need this running. I'm going to quit the emulator. Oh, just a quick thing since we have the emulator running. You can also uh, mimic a thing so I can do a lot of things. I can uh, spoof a location and set, do different settings with the advanced options. We won't necessarily need those, but those are all available here. Okay, good luck.